So I will not give uh, that much of an uh, MT uh, based approach because that's not our core business. We do MT, but we use your standard codes. We use Chromax for MT. But I want to speak a little bit from the perspective of the integrative modeling field because there has been quite some discussion over the year there also how to archive these kind of, of models. So multi-scale was also a thing there where, where people have been thinking about what to do. So what are we speaking about? Uh, well, these days in structural biology, it's very common that there is not a single technique that's going to give you all the answers. So you need to combine data, you need to use simulations in combination with all kind of experimental data uh, to, to get to your model. <coughs> I think one of the nice examples is the work of uh, Andre Sally, where he's been modeling in several stages the nuclear core complex, and in there you will find atomistic representations, you will find things that are more coarse grain and the say Martini type of coarse graining, but you will also find proteins that are simple spheres or cones based on whatever knowledge is there. So it's a really newly scale uh, kind of effort. And there was for a long time no real way of uh, uh, representing those data in a systematic manner. So this was very much linked to the software that was used for that. And also visualization of these kind of things was, was problematic. So uh, developer of camera are also very much involved in, in this effort. So can we actually use a file format or use a description of the data and of the, the, the system that allows also visualization? So I should know that I'm dealing with a coding structure and I should be able to visualize it. It's no longer the simple spheres that are linked to atoms. So, in, in principle, if you look at the, at the field uh, and the, the related software, so integrated modeling, but also docking, in the field of docking, which might be doing ab initio without any data, there is no real consensus on the data format. I think most <coughs> software in the field is still using the PDB as a, the old PDB format uh, as a consensus. Some of them can handle MMC as well, which is officially the new format of the PDB. Uh, there is no uh, efficient way of storing large data sets or say, say, uh, for, for, for sharing. It's not really uh, arranged. And if you look at the software also, different software will have different ways of sharing things because it depends what you are doing. If you are doing docking, you might just deal with rigid molecules and the only thing that you need to store in principle is the transformation matrix. So rotation, translation, you have done and you can reproduce the entire set. So that's very compact. Um, and if you look at uh, publications, uh, if you are lucky, there may, there may be a PDB file attached that's supplementary material. So that's the, the thing. And uh, usually there is uh, uh, never the full data that are shared in terms of, of communities. And, and it's very rare that you find actually the settings of uh, four people in the docking. So at least in the docking field, it's not very common. So. Well, we uh, run into problems also. We are participating to experiments like Capri, where you have to do uh, docking, scoring, and all of that. And, and the scoring part, we get PDBs from all of our, all the community. <coughs> and we run into problems that not all PDBs are equal. There is some standard software that are not producing the proper PDB format, and, and this might just uh, give you trouble. There is many software that are actually uh, truncating those PDBs right after the coordinates. Will not have occupancy Q factors or even the fields that are coming after that that also contain useful information. So because of that, we started uh, uh, developing. Actually, that's not the uh, image I wanted to do, but these PDB tools, which is a simple manipulation of PDBs, but also simple validations, and we, we use that also in our portals. So we are operating. So Hadoc, the main usage of Hadoc is through a web portal where people submit data, but we have to do a heavy validation of the data that come in, otherwise the portal breaks down. Um, so people have been submitting Word document to the portal. They edit the PDB file in Word and they, they, they don't realize what PDB file is. They don't know that it's a text file. And then they submit a Word document and of course it doesn't work. And it, comes, it doesn't work, please fix it. But even the PDB doesn't support PDB anymore. No. Well, it's still, it's still there. So you, you can still download it uh, from the site, but the official format is MMC. So the other thing, so now our portal also, we, sh we should support MMC as input as output want to do things properly. But I think there's a lot of software out there which is still not yet ready to handle MMC. And uh, so what you will see now is that people are dealing with MMC, but they are converting back to, some, to the old PDB format, and then you're dealing with that you know, software, which is perfectly fine if you are looking at small objects. But uh, if you have more than uh, 9,999 residues in your system, then you screw the PDB. That's the end of it. Or you have to start playing with chains and all of that. 
is doable. So, in terms of what we are doing, uh, in terms of data, <coughs> the server has been operating now uh, eight years. And uh, at, there are two stages. So, when people submit their data, but also when they get back their data, and this will be the, the, the start of the result page, we do provide first, well, okay, the complete uh, uh, data structure, but this it's, it's our, this is based on a directory structure PDB, so nothing fancy. But we also, since the task, we have, we have been providing a parameter file, which is actually a self-contained text file, uh, which contains the parameters of the data. So even if the users don't see all the options, so the single interface to the portal is just give me two PDBs and a list of residues, and, and that's it. Uh, they get this file, which they can download before actually even the, the run starts, which contains probably 500 parameters that they could in principle change. And it contains the coordinates and it contains the data they got. So that's a self-contained file, which we're always saying, well, if you want to save one file, save this one, because there's also an option in the portal to upload this file as one file upload and rerun the simulation. So we're also advertising, if you want to provide a supplementary material or something from your modeling, do give this file, because someone else can take it, come back to the server, and hopefully get the same results, unless we have changed things on the server or you're running a different model. Um, so that's a simple, let's say, text file. So now we are moving to a JSON version of this file in a new server that Miguel has been working on. And also in context, so HTF5 was mentioned just before by, uh, by Eric, so in the context of the deep learning project, uh, we, have, uh, we are also storing data in HTF5. Uh, so maybe that's something we have to consider for the future. So one of the problems that we have on a local system is that we are generating lots of small files. So it's not like MD where you have large, maybe compressed files, but a few files that are very large. So tens of thousands of small files in what we are doing. And this is causing a stress to our file system at some point. Uh, so, that's, uh, so we have to, to think of ways in the future to reduce the number of files. So, now the one about data sharing. Uh, there are few repositories where you can come with a few terabytes of data and dump them. I don't think that Zenodo will accept terabytes of data. Uh, so, so that's that's one problem uh, in the field. So there was an initiative some years, so this was published in 2016, that's uh, the SP Grid initiative, Structural Biology Grid, it's in the US, and uh, where they they were funded to provide a data repository, and the, the first aim there was to actually <coughs> store the primary image from X-ray crystallography. So actually what the detectors are recording. So the PDB is the archive for the, the structure and also the structure factors, but the structure factors are already interpreted data from the images. And they wanted to collect here the raw images, but they also, so there is a very long list of authors here, but they also accept structural models. So we have been using that uh, to publish actually our data set. So when we uh, say uh, do some new work and uh, create a benchmark and, and, and demonstrate uh, what we can do on a given system, we upload our data here. And that, that one, it's about, uh, uh, no, there's one here, there's another one. So the most recent data set that we uploaded is this one. It's about membrane protein complex. It's a benchmark where we provide uh, so all the input files, so the input file that I show you, which is self-contained, is provided also, but also all the models that come out of the docking. And this particular data set says here, storage requirement 1.3 terabytes. Okay. So that will be uncompressed. So, so they do compress the data, but so we are able to, to, to put on this repository our models. So I don't know if they will start accepting trajectories, that's something we will have to ask for them, but they, uh, they do accept, at least they do accept our models. It's not like the talking community is dumping all their models there. But for us, it's, it's a good way of doing things. Because we can indeed put a terabyte of data in there, and then it's fine. There's not so many metadata associated with that. So what you get is kind of a, uh, so they use our sync, they provide a script to, to do the things. But uh, the metadata are rather limited, and you have a DOI also. So actually, when we publish the paper related to this work, we provide a DOI to the data set. But that itself is not really machine searchable, for example. You will find a data set and a publication of the lab name, but you will not find all the details of what is in the data set. Mm -hmm. and there is no specific structure of the data. So we do provide our own directory structure, which is related to, to the way Hadoop works. 
uh, but another software might provide something completely different. So for us, it makes it easy at least to share the data that way because the format is not defined and upload anything. Okay, so now uh, for integrated modeling, since a few years now, there's a, a, a new site from the PDB which is harvesting integrated model. So the, the PDB itself will only accept, say, hardcore uh, experimental structures. Although there is some models in there, some of us are actually, for some of the, those models are coming from other. Uh, there is a dictionary which has been defined, so there's a GitHub site which is really accessible where you can see, okay, what has been defined in a model in order to allow uh, the deposition of those integrated models. For example, defining that the molecule is, has a conic shape is something that needed to be added to the model because PDB <coughs> MMC for tile format will not handle this kind of weird particles. What also went in there is we want for ad hoc, so we've been adding things in there or requesting additions. Michael can tell you much more than that. I can on this, but I want to be able to say that mutation of residue X is important for the binding. So that's information that will go in there. And there's a website where now we can actually deposit this kind of things. So this is an, an hybrid experimental modeling structures, and we also try to collect in there all the data associated with the model. So this came up uh, together because there has been a task force from the worldwide PDB that has been set up to think about what we need there. And this was a meeting which was, I think, three years ago at EBI. So I'm actually in there where different people from different uh, aspects of the fields have been thinking of what is needed to deposit the small. So it's kind of what we are doing here at a smaller scale here. I mean. um, and the recommendations from that, and this was published, uh, recommendation. So, okay, we need to archive the models, the experimental data and the metadata. We need to have a flexible model representation so that you can mix atomistic with coarse grain with this weird shape or whatever that you want to describe. You need methods for validation. That's not simple. Uh, build a federation of models and data repositories. I'm going to say a little bit more about that. And you want also to establish publication standards. So what should people report when they publish these kind of models? So what, are the, what is captured in the model? So you will have sequence chemical information. You will have uh, uh, structural data repositories. <coughs> Experimental repositories, so the model doesn't capture everything. So if there is a repository where you would put your data, you would just link to that, but it would be part of the file itself, of this MMC file, integrated modeling file. Uh, so you would describe the chemical entities, so the small molecules, if you have a cofactor in your system, whatever, it will be described here. It will describe also the starting models. So there was a discussion about where, which PDB entry did you use as starting point, so this information will be there and special restraints that you use to build the model. Say you have a few cross fields from MS, they are going to be described there. Yes? One of the problems the Open Force Field Initiative ha has had is that none of these formats that describe the chemical molecular components actually describe the chemistry. They describe the conductivity, but they don't really tell you, like Chris yeah. was saying, um, like, what, is this a double bond? Is this a single bond? Uh, do any of these file formats have a path forward that you know of that will describe so the I actual know that in MMC there was a way of describing actually the force field to some extent. So, but not uh, even the force field, very much the work species. In, yeah, so this is work in progress. So, so the, this MMC, this integrated modeling force field, the, <coughs> the MMC format itself is constantly, well, the format is not changing, but the, the, uh, the fields, fields are added to yeah. represent new stuff as we needed them. So it was very much starting from the work of Sally. So everything that was there was to, to, to model or to describe what was coming out of the integrative modeling platform of Andre Sally, him. And then we started also contributing. And we say, well, in our model, we need to be able to describe a number of arbitrary residues that are part of the interface. And this was not in the model of Sally because they were doing things differently. And this has been added. So this is very much progressing. So the model was not defined from the start, and this is what we need, and that's it. No, we add stuff as we need. So in people, in, this could be a starting point for something else, but you say we need to add those uh, additional entries there. And this model, this integrative modeling uh, C format is kind of decoupled from the PDB one, because the PDB is very hard to add things, so it's a kind of a procedure to do that, and this is much more flexible in a way. Uh, it's a different repositories. 
but there is a, so it's evolving basically. And you can look at what is in there already. Uh, so there is also a software library that supports the dictionary, and there are APIs to that. <coughs> so, so currently, what is uh, linked in all of that? So there are connections to EMDB that would be the prime EM data, SASDB for the, the, the SACS data, BMRB for LMR data. Uh, there is a, a mass spectrometry cross-linking type database where people can deposit. Uh, threat data, there's also a database for that. So the idea is not to store everything in that particular repository, but to link as much as possible to existing ones. But if nothing is existing, then it's okay to, to add new entries. So the example was typically about to have a mutation which is coming from this table in article X. So you could describe that in a model. So we have been starting, and actually Mikkel has been to work to uh, enable uh, support in Hadoop for this format. Uh, so we want to facilitate the position of models into this uh, PDB archive or PDB dev archive. So the, the new Hadoop portal uh, is now creating this kind of, of models. And the idea would be that we should be, so what you get out of a docking typically is not one model, but an ensemble of models which are with associated energies and uh, the clustering, all of that. So we want to capture all of that in one file that we provide to the user so that the user can add a little bit of information to the file, but then uh, go for the deposition. Because the deposition system, now it's not like the PDB where you are guided through all the fields that you need to enter. This is not yet at that stage. Uh, so we should support as input this uh, MMC file, and we should support as output also those files. So we have now built it as output of the server. There are different options. At this time, it's still per model or per structure, but ultimately we want to have one uh, download parameters where we capture all the models that we present to the user at the end, which could be different clusters and with all the associated energies, clustering statistics. So one file should contain all. And hopefully that will also allow you in camera or camera X to visualize the complete top and run in one go, because camera X is also working very much with this format to visualize clustering statistics and all of that. Um, so opportunities, if you think, so, so for integrative model PDB dev as a repository, it's funded actually for, for US grants at this time. The PDB Europe is also involved in that. So there is storage there. If you think of MD, uh, we need also, well, Eric had a different uh, model possibly to share the data, which is probably the pirate data model, which is probably a good one, because you need to involve also the data infrastructure providers, so not the data generators, but the people who are willing to, to, to store the data. So in our case, we use SP Grid. I don't know how long they will be happy to accept models. Maybe at some point they will say no more. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, we have this European Open Science Cloud, we are in Europe here, so maybe there are opportunities there to, to do things because uh, it does provide uh, networking, compute, and behind this, there is data as well. So we are working in, uh, in this European Science Cloud and we have this service level agreement, so we are only using compute actually in the Science Cloud these days. But we have, for example, uh, 250 terabyte of dedicated storage. Of course, that's not going to help you as a community because this is one of the data sets. So that, that's peanuts. But maybe to organize the, the <coughs> metadata, uh, astronomy is using those resources. Different communities are using resources. So if we have a good <coughs> use case to say, well, we would like to operate some server or portal to collect the data, maybe we, we can make a run for it. And uh, that's it. I just want to acknowledge a few people here. So I got a number of, so Brita is the one who's really leading this integrative modeling uh, uh, MMC format. So she's the one to contact if you want to have your uh, double bond described in the format because it's, it's required if you decide to build on that. And Ellen Berman was the former head of RCSB and John Westbrook is the boss of MMC when it comes to the PDB pretty much. Uh, so these are all the PIs from the worldwide PDB. So for the UK people, you might know Samir, so he's involved in this initiative as well. Although most of the integrative modeling initiative is happening in the US. So Andre Sally is very much uh, leading this. Tom Goddard, camera, camera X, is also very much involved. And uh, on our side, we're also part of this. So Miguel has been doing all the work, actually. And the idea is we need to promote by providing ready to 
well, kind of ready to deposit files, promote the sharing of the data in that way. Okay. All right. All right.